which is better, the We Create Vision or the X2 Less One? I get asked that uh, quite a bit. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, a non-sanctioned, non-sponsored by anybody video on this. Of what I think of these two lasers. It is not an apples to apples comparison. Uh, for the very first reason is the we create here is a 20 watt and my X2 less one is a 40 watt. So it has twice the power. But they do both do similar things. So what's the biggest plus on them? over uh, open frame laser. In open frame lasers they call class 4. You need protective eyewear, etc, um, etc. Et you need to watch what other people are doing and that type of thing. Uh, the We Create Vision and the X2LS1 are what they call class 1 laser which means they are in an enclosure and where you can see what's going on, everything is shielded and if you lift the lid like this, for example, it will shut it down unless you defeat that, and I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but no, we're not going to say how to do that. But on either one of them, if you uh, open that lid, it'll shut down. So there's both alike right there. They both have, uh, I guess what you would call autofocusing, different systems. Uh, the We Create Vision uses a, uh, I guess you'd call it a visual, and the x S1 uses a probe but they both work very very well for focusing. So which one is easier to use? If you are a raw beginner and have never used a laser before and are just getting into this, uh, especially if you have a problem you know with learning new software and that, uh, the We Create Vision is the way to go. It is really really simple to use. You, you place your object in it, uh, it has an internal camera, and it, you bring it up on your screen on their software, it's free software, you don't have to buy anything. And you can lay your image where you want it, you can move it around and pick your material and I've done a video on it, I'm not going to go into all the steps on it, but it, it's very very simple to use for the beginner. So what about the X-Tool S1? Um, I think it's easy to use, but then I'm very proficient in using Lightburn. Uh, X-Tool also has their own software. Of, I, think called, uh, I forget what it's called now. They do have their own software and it's free and you can do everything in it pretty much. Not quite what you can do with Lightburn. Uh, this does, the x S1 does support Lightburn for about 95% of all its functions and that's what I use with it. Getting back to the We Create Vision, it kind of sort of supports light burn. There is a driver patch thing you could put in the light burn, but what you have to do, and it's 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 kind of a hassle if you if you're wanting to use light burn. You can set up at your graphic or whatever you're doing in light burn. Then you have to make sure you have all the coordinates, the thickness of the material and everything, and you can import that G code into uh, the We Create software and go that way. And I've done it twice, but like I said, it's a hassle. Uh, you're better off, unless you're doing something extremely complex, to just use their own software and line everything up with the camera and all that. Uh, the X-Tool S1 does not have an internal camera. It'd be kind of cool if it did, because it'd make it easier to shoot video. But it doesn't need it so much for the design as it's there's just two completely different worlds. That's why it's not really an apples to apples comparison. So I'm just kind of trying to point that out. Uh, I'm a big user of Lightburn. Uh, I've got 18 lasers. That's what I use. I use Lightburn. So this was uh, a no-brainer for me. I, was, I just picked it up. It was super simple. And once I got past uh, figuring out how the focusing worked and getting the probe put on there right, but that was a user error there, uh, it works fine. Of the We Create Vision. It actually took me a little bit to catch on to this one because it is so simple. I was trying to make it more complicated than it was. But as, again, if you're a first time user, don't know anything about it, this is the way to go. If you're more experienced and you're looking to step up to a class 1 laser and you want more power, so as I said, this is a 40 watt. They also have a 20 watt unit. It, uh, and the X2 S1 is the one to go with. 
So there again, that's not apples to apples. Okay, another thing that they both have is exhaust. And uh, it's a powered exhaust. There's a fan internal. And I actually have a blower up here in the room mounted in the window over there. It's out of camera view. So you can kind of see the ductwork for it behind me here. And I can hook up either one of these to it. Uh, they both have a 3 inch exhaust. Of course, my exhaust is 4 inch, so I have adapters to reset down. And um, when I have that blower running coupled with the fans in these, it exhausts everything and I don't smell anything in here whatsoever. So they both have that. They both have internal lighting, so you can see what's going on in there if you're looking down through the cover. That, that's a big plus too. Now, what about disadvantages? Any cons? My biggest one are the covers, the acrylic, because they just are dust magnets. However, bounce dryer sheets or whatever other brand you may happen to like. Rub the uh, surfaces down on both sides with a, a dryer sheet and it'll uh, greatly reduce the static on there and it will greatly reduce the amount of dust that they seem to like to attract. Now on the inside, on, this goes for both of them, when you're doing cutting and there's a lot of smoke vapors and etc going on it's going to cloud up that acrylic on, on both of them. It doesn't matter. It's, they both have that. And I have the same thing on my laser enclosures. The uh, acrylic or the plastic covers will get clouded up on the inside. But easy fix for that. Your favorite glass cleaner. This uh, is a no brand in here. It's, you know, you don't need to go out and buy the real expensive stuff for this like you were going to detail a show car. Uh, Give a few sprays in there, paper towel, uh, make sure there's no grit or you're going to scratch your acrylic. And then once that dries, rub over it again with that bounce dryer sheet and you'll eliminate a whole bunch of them problems. Air assist. They both have air assist. They both come with their own pumps and the hook up and connection area, it's, it's very, very simple. Uh, the X-Tool is auto. The we Create Vision is auto. It runs automatically. So there's a uh, comparison there that's not really a comparison because they both have exactly the same thing and they both work very well and uh, I will mention along with air assist especially when you're doing cutting you want to have that air assist running not only to help improve your cut reduce the scorching but it keeps your lens clean so you're not cleaning your lens all the time Okay, and another con, and it, uh, well, maybe you won't, you won't consider it a con, but I do, and the 3D printer manufacturers are, are uh, guilty of this, too. They put the power switches on the back of the unit. That is by no means convenient, especially, uh, like with 3D printers. If you have a print farm and you've got a whole bunch of printers lined up next to each other and you want to turn them on and off, you're going to have to reach around behind. It's the same thing with these. Uh, both of them, the switches are on the back. I wish they would put the switches on the front. Some laser companies do that with their controllers, but when you with the enclosed ones like this, uh, I just wish they put the switches in the front. It'd be a little bit more convenient for the user. Okay, so what about using a rotary? The We Create Vision comes with a rotary. I've got it sitting right here. It mounts to the frame inside. I'll be doing a video on how that operates and how it works. So you have this great depth and as you can see here, in fact, I may zoom the camera down a little bit so you can see the uh, height of this because right now it's extended all the way up. So as you can see height-wise, the uh, X2L S1 is very, very low profile. This one, it's extended all the way up. Uh, you can use a rotary in there and you don't really need to do anything unless you're trying to do some like great big barrel. You're not going to do that. But uh, for most things, as this is, it works just fine. Now, if you wanted to use a rotary with the uh, S1 and it was anything of any substantial diameter at all, you would need to buy the riser kit for this, which you attach it to the bottom and then it raises it up and allows you to set the rotary down farther. So that would be an additional purchaser, of course. But there's the differences between the two as far as using a rotary. What about work area? Well, they're basically the same. Um, you get about an inch less in uh, one direction. I don't remember which one it is on the We Create Vision than you do on the X2L S1. But 
there for me it's a wash it's pretty much uh, identical uh, X tool does have something for the s1 it's a conveyor where you can do things pretty much as long as you want as long as you have enough conveyor sections and it requires a riser and you'd have to buy of course purchase a conveyor for it but you can actually do really really long things and it just runs right through the bottom as a conveyor of course you need a whole lot of space to do that too and I obviously don't have the space in here but it, if you're looking to do uh, for example port signs I do a lot of those on a uh, actually on a longer Ray 5 that I extended. I also have a X-Tool D1 that I extended the Y-axis on so I can do long port signs. But you could do it on this if you purchase a conveyor. Uh, that's not an option with this one here. Just uh, another comparison where things are not exactly apples to apples. So why buy a class 1 laser? These aren't cheap over a class 4 open frame. If you have kids, especially little ones, or if you have pets that like to stare at laser beams or you cannot keep them kind of out of the way and secured these are very very safe uh, in that respect because again if the thing is running and you open the lid it shuts off uh, both of them are like that so uh, you know a curious kid or can't you know, open up and damage their eyes or anything whereas with an open frame laser even though any of the ones anymore do a pretty good job of shielding the laser beam around there. If you get down at the right angle, you can still see it in a way it would damage your eyes. And generally, a small child would be right at that height. So that would be one reason to buy one of these. Another one is you don't have to have another enclosure. These are already enclosed. So you don't have to purchase a separate enclosure. You don't have to have a place to set it up and buy a fan and do all that kind of stuff with so there's another uh, kind of plus to getting a class 1 totally enclosed laser over a open frame class 4. Now the what's the advantages over a class 4 over a class 1? Well you've got a larger area if you're doing something long and obviously you can't do it on the Wii Create at all if you did have the conveyor on the uh, S1, yes you could do it, but you're going to have to buy all those extra components. On an open frame laser, you generally have enough space between the frame and the base to put something long in there that is wider than the uh, frame of the laser is, and you can also do things in steps. So let's say you want to do a four foot port sign, so you've got a 300 millimeter work area, you engrave part of it, wait till that finishes, move the project down underneath the frame, frame it out so your next part do the next part and a third part if you need to so there's something you can do with a uh, open frame class 4 laser you can't do with one of these or well without buying a conveyor for this one so just another little difference there just trying to point out some of these uh, differences between them and what you can and can't do with a class 1 versus a class 4 and I'm not promoting any brand I'm not promoting either one of these or any one of the other brands I mentioned. As I said, I have 18 lasers, so I have a lot of experience with a whole bunch of different ones. Just trying to point out, get this question all the time, what's the best laser to get? What's the best first laser? Uh, and it also boils back to, and this comes up on our live stream quite a bit, the same question. It depends what you're going to do. Uh, do you need to have a 40 watt? No, you don't, unless you're going to do almost exclusively cutting with it. Uh, 40 watt does engraving too. However, it does not engrave as fine or as accurately as a 10 watt would. So if you get into you get at the 20 to 30 watt range right there, it's kind of a good mid-range point. If you're going for extreme accuracy and engraving and the finest lines and the finest detail, then you'd want to go with a, a 10 watt. If you're going to do engraving and cutting both, get into the 20 or 30 watt. If you're going to do mostly cutting, look at the 40 watt. And I'm all talking dino lasers here. I'm not talking CO2. That's a whole different ball game. I got one of those sitting over there, and that's a whole other thing. So there's, I hope I cleared the, some of this up for some of you that ask, you know, what's the best laser to get, and which is better, the Wii Creator or the x Tool S1? Or should I get a class 4 laser? Should I get a class 1 laser? 
what's the difference is. I hope some of this helped. And it was a lot of rambling on, but just trying to point some of that out for you. If you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. There won't be any links in the description for any of these lasers. This is uh, completely non-sponsored by anybody. Just thought I'd put this out there as some information. Thanks for watching. I'm Roger in the laser room in the loft above the shop. We'll see you on the next one.